The system is not sustainable. My ears are weary from hearing it. The system is not sustainable. Healthcare is too expensive. The system is not sustainable. Government is gridlocked. It's overly divided. The system is not sustainable. Yesterday, I think our children told us that our relationship with guns, the system is not sustainable. Our family systems are not sustainable. Parents get old, kids move away. And even the system of our bodies are not sustainable. Today I am praying for a pastor who instead of leading worship on this Palm Sunday is in the ICU for the third or fourth day on a respirator as they try to restore her ability to breathe. The system is not sustainable. And what we really expect Jesus to do is ride in at the last minute and command the system, control the system, challenge the system, change the system. We expect Jesus to make the system work for us. Isn't that what we want when we pray for a miracle? Jesus, change the system so that it works for us. And Jesus doesn't do it. Not this week, anyway. Jesus submits to the system. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus submits to arrest. Before the high priest, Jesus submits to being a blasphemer. Before Pilate, Jesus submits to, 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 to um, a sentence of capital punishment. And before the soldiers, Jesus submits to bullying and torture. And on the cross, Jesus submits to death. And it appears that the death-dealing system is working. And we all, they all, all of us respond as we do when we think ourselves caught up, trapped, caught in a death-dealing system. We pour out our love from the alabaster jar of our hearts and it is received as scandal. We weigh our options, we pray to God, what we do what we think is best, and it turns out to be betrayal. We want to talk about Jesus, to share our faith, but it feels uncomfortable and it could be risky. Better to deny Jesus and play it safe. My favorite character in the whole passion is the one who followed Jesus and they went into the garden and they took hold of him. He was wearing a linen, only a linen cloth and he ran away leaving the, the cloth. That's all of us in a caught up death dealing system that appears to be winning. We find ourselves naked and ashamed and vulnerable and afraid, scared, and so we run away. Even Jesus seems to know that the system is winning. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus dies. The women who followed Jesus all through his ministry, they followed him to the cross and they saw it. Jesus is dead. Joseph of Arimathea knew it. You see, there was another linen cloth, a burial cloth. 
They laid Jesus in, in the tomb. They wrapped him in it. And it appeared that the system won, but no. You see, there is another young man in a linen cloth who appeared and pointed to the tomb and said, he's not here. The tomb is empty. But I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? That's for next Sunday. For today we know that Jesus submits to our death-dealing system. That the systems will die and there will be new life. But there is no new life without death, even death of a system. I feel that pretty closely to home because, as tired as my ears are of saying it, my tongue is e of hearing it, my tongue is even more tired of saying it. Even the system we use to be church is dying. We can't sustain, no matter how much you love your church, a worshiping community of 13 forever. The waves of immigration that brought Lutherans from Germany and Scandinavia are over. Yep, the system is dying. And there's no new life without death. Jesus will bring new life, but not today, not without dying. And so we have some waiting to do. We have some following to do. We have some trusting to do. We have some dying to do. Confident that Jesus is with us and that Jesus will bring new life. Amen.